Hi, this is Joe and welcome back to the shop. Another successful trip to uh, Harbor Freight. Um, I have some parts uh, here. I have a, uh, a, a mist, uh, misting nozzle and what I'm going to do and I have some uh, air hoses and air fittings uh, and I'm going to uh, plumb up uh, and mount uh, my mist, uh, mist device here to the mill and then I'm going to use the, uh, the three-way connect here so I can have uh, both an air nozzle, a compressed air nozzle, and control for my mister. So uh, we're going to be uh, using, I have a magnetic base I picked up, and again these things are like $13. So I'm going to be using, setting up the magnetic base, I'm going to be mounting the, uh, the mister to the magnetic base so I can put it in various locations on the mill. So uh, we're going to start that. Um, interesting, I, when I went to the, both Harbor Freight and uh, um, Home Depot today, um, they, because of the virus, they were having uh, lines. So they're only letting so many people into the store at a time. And then as people come out, then they let more in. So actually, that's pretty decent. Uh, that they're doing that. They have six feet markers uh, set up at the cash register so everyone can stand in line at a safe distance. So you have to give these stores uh, credit for doing that. So let's get rolling on our project here and uh, get this wrapped up and show you how it's going to work. We're going to start out by using a transfer punch and uh, set some holes. Uh, this mister has a brass block where all of the air passageways and uh, coolant passageways go through. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, drill some holes and we're going to mount this mister to the uh, to the magnetic base. So let's uh, if you've never used a transfer punch it's pretty nice. You uh, They come in different diameters. You basically put it in and then you tap the create a, uh, a center punched hole and then you can uh, you can then punch the hole or mark the hole fairly accurately and then you can use uh, a center punch to uh, to mark it a little deeper after you do the transfer punch and notice there's the, the little mark right there now I can come in with my stare at uh, center punch and make it a little deeper and then I can uh, fairly accurately drill out the holes and then we'll tap them with uh, 1032 screws. So let me uh, let me go get my center punch and uh, we'll keep on working. After we use the transfer punch then we can come in with a proper center punch and that makes the hole a little bit more well defined and then that way when we go ahead and drill the drill won't wobble all over the place and we can get a fairly fairly accurate hole. So let's go ahead and uh, drill the hole now. I drilled uh, on the drill press one hole and uh, we did use a, a number 21 drill bit. That's the recommended size for a 1032 uh, tapped hole. You noticed I only drilled one hole. To get accuracy we're going to drill and tap and mount one hole and then we're going to um, transfer punch the other hole and center drill it and drill that. That uh, gives you more accuracy when you're mounting. So let's go ahead and tap this. What I've done is uh, I've taken a um, tapered tap and flattened the end off on my um, on my belt sander so I can uh, get down further in this hole. There's a cylindrical magnet in this base so you don't want to drill too terribly deep but I've been able to drill far enough down to where I can get some good grab on the screws so we're just going to go ahead and tap this in and when you're working with small taps you want to be very careful not to twist too hard because you do not want to snap a little tap off in a hole. It then becomes very difficult to get out. Uh, tap is hardened, uh, hardened tool steel so you want to be very careful. So okay, 
So, okay, looks pretty good. Let's get one of our screws and uh, do a test fit here. I normally usually buy my screws a little extra long. That way I can cut them to size. It's better to have a slightly too long screw than a too short screw. So that fits quite nicely. Let's go ahead and line this up now. And let's uh, transfer punch. Let's see if you can see that okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and get in here. Again, the screw has not been cut to cut the size yet. Okay. And then we're going to line this up by eyeball to make sure it's perfectly straight. Again, this is not a critical or precision mounting. We just want to make sure we have a good mount on that. Okay. We can then go in with our transfer punch. And we can do the same thing with the other hole. Okay, there's our other hole. Let's uh, make it slightly deeper with a uh, my stare at uh, center punch. Okay, and then I'll go over to the drill pet press and uh, drill it, and then we'll come back and we'll tap it. Okay, when I was drilling the second hole, I'm assuming this uh, is cast material. Uh, you probably can't see in there, but there's a hole in there. So it looks like I hit uh, some type of uh, air pocket or impurity or something, and it oblonged the hole. So that definitely wasn't going to tap. So what I had to do was drill and tap two more holes. Uh, no big deal. Uh, we have enough space. Let's just go ahead and uh, mount the mister to the, uh, the mag block here. And uh, make sure you uh, use compressed air to blow out all your cavities and holes. There's a magnet in here, as I said before, a, a cylindrical magnet. So you don't want a bunch of chips in there rubbing on that magnet. So we made sure we did that. Okay, so we're snug now. Let's get on there and tighten that up. Okay, so there's the, uh, the configuration for the mister with the magnetic back. Let's go uh, reposition the camera and go over and, uh, to the mill and, and uh, let's see, I'll show you where I'm going to mount it. Okay, as you can see, um, the magnetic base mounts really nice to the spindle nose here. And I have enough room to reach the uh, shutoff valve for the uh, air inlet. And uh, I have enough uh, to put a hose, enough space up here to put a hose on there. And of course, we can now position. I'm gonna. This is this is up the pickup tube for the coolant, and I'm gonna come up with a, a container that I'm gonna mount over here somewhere. We'll worry about that later. But as you can see now, I can uh, position my mister really close to the tooling, and then I can have a mister there. And if I don't like that position, if my uh, spindle nose is very close to the uh, retractable head. I can also mount that there and uh, so there's several different locations I can mount this depending on uh, if things are in the way uh, and the nice thing about the magnetic base is uh, I can move it around and I don't have to drill a bunch of holes in the mill so um, let's go ahead move on to the next step which is uh, get the hoses all set up I'm gonna have a split uh, split hose where I can have one hose uh, at the mill for blowing off uh, parts as I'm milling and then I can have another hose that I can use for the uh, the mister coolant so let's go ahead and work on that now mounting the uh, mister to the mag base was the toughest part of this operation now we're just gonna assemble the hoses and stuff so let's uh, open up this packaging and get rolling What I'm going to do is uh, mount this down near the ground um, and then take my, my, my uh, compressed air line from my compressor 
and attach it to here. And then I have two hoses. And then from the floor, I'll run one hose up to the mister and the other hose to my compressed air nozzle. That way, these uh, short hoses, and, and this is what's called remnant hose, it's anywhere from 8 feet to 15 feet. So then I can mount these hoses on the mill and they'll just stay there. And then if I need to use the air hose on some other project, I can just uh, disconnect it from the uh, manifold here. Uh, I guess they call this a coupler. And then uh, that way I don't have to be uh, uh, repositioning a bunch of hoses. I just have to move the one hose. This stuff will stay with the mill. At one end, we're going to um, put Oops, I have another one here. I'll have to get another one of these. I think I have one in the toolbox. We put one of these on here to go into the the uh, coupler. Now one thing on the, if you don't know this, there's two different types of uh, quick disconnects. There's what's called an IM um, and then I believe it's called a Y. So when you when you purchase connectors for your air hoses, make sure you purchase the uh, the right ones. Uh, if, if you're in doubt, take one of your connectors with you when you go up to the hardware store or Harbor Freight and that way all your connectors will be the same. So one end of the hose is going to uh, have a uh, a male connector and the other end of the hose um, onto in this case either the compressed air nozzle or the uh, mister is going to have a female. So we'll set up that and that will work like that. So, okay. So I'm going to prepare these two hoses. I'll do them off camera. I don't want to bore you guys. So we'll get that set up and then we'll go over to the mill and uh, route these hoses properly. I have the uh, three hose coupler down on the ground. I have this hitched up to some air, so all I have to do here is I can adjust the uh, air pressure and when I put some coolant in my coolant tank I can then uh, have coolant to the to the spindle and then I have the other uh, hose to the three three hose coupler so I can now work on the mill with the uh, air compressor nozzle. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty easy fix and hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any comments, please feel free to leave them. Any requests, let me know. Thank you so much. I will see you next video.